What's up, y'all? Welcome to episode two of Intersectionality Saturday. Let's get it. So today I want to talk about uh, the term Oreo. O-R-E-O. Yes, Oreo. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with this term, and I'm really interested to see how many of you have been impacted by this term. But if you're unfamiliar and you don't know what Oreo means, well, let me tell you. We all know what the cookie is, right? Chocolate on the outside, white on the inside. So it's pretty much the same when it comes to people. And this is a term that I heard a lot growing up and in many different spaces. But back then, I didn't really know its impact. I heard it a lot, really, when people were referencing my mom. And I agreed. And I thought the exact same thing. Oh, ha, 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 right, she's black on the outside, white on the inside. But I didn't really know the magnitude of saying or calling somebody an Oreo. And so I would see my mom and her and I would have the conversation and she knew because she had been called that before. And so she wasn't really phased by it. And when we had the conversation, a lot of it boiled down to a couple different areas. She would say, why? Why do people think that I'm an Oreo? Because I'm educated? Because I'm articulate? Because I don't do certain things? You know, fill in the blank. And when I'm in middle school and high school, I didn't think anything of it. I just wanted to be cool. And so I didn't really get called it myself when I was in middle school and high school. But I did notice that the more I got closer to my faith, (laughs) uh, and that being white Christianity, the more I got called an Oreo. There were times when growing up um, that friends would say, oh, I couldn't watch BET. I had to watch WET, right? So black entertainment television, I had to watch white entertainment television. So I would get these kind of jokes and stuff growing up, but I didn't really understand them or take the time to understand them. Yeah, they were funny at the time, uh, but now when I look back at how that impacted my development as a black woman. And this is where the intersection between being black and being a woman and being a Christian all combines. Is because there's the black aspect of me that grew further away from my black culture because of my Christianity. And that directly impacted my upbringing and the way we did life. So it only makes sense that if my mom was being called an Oreo, that people would then start to call me an Oreo because, well, that's my mom. So a lot of times people will say, oh, you're an Oreo, and and it's been a joke within the community. But we really have to take a step back and look at what does that really mean and how impactful is that? As I continued to grow up and just try to discover who I was, and I went to a predominantly white institution, nobody there called me an Oreo. It just, it wasn't anything that ever came up. But when I started my professional career working with youth, (laughs) and if you know, kids hold no punches, and I grew great relations with my students. And this is when I started to be called an Oreo. This is post-life being spent in predominantly white communities. Now here I go serving at-risk youth who we live two totally different lives and they see me one way and so they start saying, Miss Reese, you're an Oreo, ha ha ha. And it's funny and we laughed and we also had the same conversations. But then I found myself having that same conversation with them that my mom had with me. Why? Is it because I'm educated? Is it because I'm articulate? Is it because I don't do X, Y, and Z? What is it that makes me an Oreo? What is it that makes me not black enough? What's really funny is sometimes it would come after me eating almonds or me eating yogurt, right? Eating white foods. And my students would say, ugh, that's white. You eat oatmeal? Ugh, that's white. You eat yogurt? And of course, it's hilarious because it's boiled down now to a food that eating oatmeal, yogurt, and almonds is something that's healthy as an athlete or just a human is now something that connects me to whiteness. And so as I've continued to grow, I've had to really think about this. And what are things that we label as white that are just good for us, that are just healthy, that are just things, but they're labeled white because for ages, white people have had the resources and the opportunity to engage and indulge in certain things that in black and brown communities didn't exist. And so it started to make sense to me that this is why I and we were considered Oreos. This is why is because I was able to partake 
in things that traditionally white people did that weren't something that was heavy in the black community. One of my favorite shows is The Breakfast Club. And on there, DJ Envy talks about how him and his family were denied the opportunity by BET to do a, a reality sitcom because they weren't black enough. And I love that he has the ability to talk about this because he goes into why. How are we not black enough? Why are we not black enough? Because we're not acting ghetto? And that's essentially where this comes down to is being an Oreo is connected to whiteness on the inside because we're disconnected from doing things that are ghetto. Now, you can have this conversation in multiple different ways and get different responses from multiple different people, but it's something, it's something that can be crippling to somebody's development in their black identity, crippling in their development of understanding their black culture simply because they don't do a certain set of things. And it's dangerous because it causes separation in identity development and cultural understanding. And that's something that I saw for myself. But it's also something that makes it a very limited and narrow-minded thought process when it comes to what does it mean to be black? Now that can be answered in multiple different ways by multiple different people and I'm not here to have that argument. But one thing that I know it does is it helps develop self-hate and self-hatred for your culture and for your community and for your peers because there's a lack of understanding with something that is so nuanced. So my mission is to turn white people-ish just into dope-ish. They shouldn't get to have all the fun or have all the good food or whatever the case may be is. But I want to normalize a lot of things and not make it to where just because somebody is bougie or affluent or eats almonds or yogurt or is articulate or has education that they're now white or they're white on the inside. We need to normalize those things in the black and brown community. So let's normalize the things that we consider being white and just turn them into things that are really good for us. So if you're going to call somebody an Oreo, make sure you're referring to the one with the chocolate on the inside. Let's normalize dope stuff because we're worthy of it. And also understand that there's no one way to be black and your black is black enough. Thank you for tuning in to episode two of Intersectionality Saturdays. Let's grow.